judgment in the matter of Rock Advertising Limited versus MWB Business Exchange Centres Limited. Lord Sumption will summarise the judgment. This appeal raises a long-standing problem in the law of contract. What effect is to be given to a clause in a written agreement providing that it can only be amended in writing signed by both parties? Such clauses are in very common use. They are known as no oral modification clauses. MWB Business Exchanges operates serviced offices in central London. Rock Advertising entered into a contract with MWB to occupy office space for a year at one of its properties near Marble Arch. The contract contained a no oral modification clause. Rock Advertising's rent payments fell into arrears and the company's sole director negotiated with a credit controller at MWB an oral agreement rescheduling the rent payments. The effect of the rescheduling was that the early payments were reduced and the difference loaded onto the later payments. This was an amendment of the contract, but it was not in accordance with the no oral modification clause because it was neither in writing nor signed by the parties. When Rock Advertising began to pay at the revised rates, MWB demanded the full amount and when it was not forthcoming, evicted them. The judge held uh, that the no oral modification clause applied. He held that the amendment was ineffective because it was not in writing. Therefore, MWB was entitled to demand the original payments and to evict rock advertising when they were not made. The Court of Appeal disagreed. They held that the clause was ineffective and that MWB was bound by the amendment. Their reasoning, in summary, was that in English law, there are no formal requirements for the validity of a contract. With a small number of exceptions, none of them relevant in this case, uh, contracts can be made orally or in writing with or without a signature. A variation of a contract is itself a contract. So when the parties orally agreed to vary the payment schedule in the contract, it was implicit that they were also agreeing to dispense with the no oral modifications clause. The same view has been taken by a number of common law courts in the Commonwealth and the United States. The effect of this reasoning, if it is correct, is that such clauses are wholly without effect, regardless of the intentions of the parties. The Supreme Court holds that the Court of Appeal was wrong and that no oral modification clauses ought to be given effect according to their terms. These clauses are in common use because they serve a legitimate business purpose. They avoid misunderstandings and disputes about whether an informal variation has been agreed or not and what its terms are by requiring irrefutable evidence of any variation. They also assist companies in enforcing internal lines of authority. The law does not usually frustrate the legitimate purposes of businessmen unless they conflict with some overriding public policy. There is no public policy against requiring written agreements to be varied in writing or not at all. On the contrary, the reasons given for ignoring no oral modification clauses are entirely conceptual. The argument is that an informal variation automatically destroys an agreement banning informal variations. In this court's view, there is no conceptual objection. What the parties have agreed is not that they are forbidden to vary the contract informally, but that any informal agreement will be ineffective in law. There is no reason why the parties should not contract out of the ordinary English rules of English law permitting informal agreements by agreeing whatever, what form any variation to their contract must take if effect is to be given to it. The safeguard against injustice lies in the law of estoppel. In cases where the parties have acted to their detriment on the basis that the variation was effective, they may be estopped in some cases from relying on the no oral modification clause but the facts of this case could not support an estoppel of that kind because rock advertising did hardly anything in relying on the informal variation in reliance on the informal variation before MWB made it clear that they were proposing to insist on the original terms the appeal will therefore be allowed <laughs>